Today's adventure takes us to the Ellis R. Hatch Wildlife Management Area. We are at the Jones Pond entrance. We're going to take you out to the cave on Moose Mountain and then bring you over to the legendary Bear Hansen Cave. At least that's the plan. Hopefully we'll find it. And joining us today is the greatest adventure team ever. Our friends Dave, Tina, and Barry are joining us. Of course, my lovely wife, Cheryl, and Miss Brandy the Wonder Mutt. Now this wildlife management area is 1920 acres in size and what you're looking at here is Jones Pond. Before they put the dam in this used to be called Poco Moonshine. Why? I do not know. <laughs> but it was much smaller and since they put the dam in now it's about 20 acres in size and they do stock it with brook trout. Hey who's that over there on a catwalk hon? That's our adventure team. Underneath the catwalk is how they control the water level. You're gonna have to trust me I can't get my head in there to see if I'm getting anything. But as I pan back up, right there would be the keeper of the dam. Yeah, it's a bird's nest. Get me out of here! Holy mackerel! I'm someone stuck down here! All right, everybody, that was Dave. He found out how to get out. <laughs> okay. Plus, I dried off already. Yeah. In case you're wondering who the wildlife management area is named after, well, he was the Stratford County Fish and Game Commissioner for 24 years. They say he was one of the greatest fly tires ever, so it just seems fitting how only fly fishing is allowed in this wildlife management area. What you're looking at here is where we are headed next. We are going up to the Moose Mountain Cave. It's up there somewhere. Let's go find it. Now, if you intend on coming up to Moose Mountain Cave, after the pond, it's gonna get rough. It goes up, it's all rock. We're climbing around the rocks. We're looking for Tina's cave first. Been a lot of Dave butt shot going on here. Yeah. It's, uh... <laughs> hey, why did you just go in the other way? Because <laughs> I got to do the whole thing. Otherwise, I can't sleep at night. All right, so I'm standing flat. That does drop down. Yep. So I'll go out the other way if you want to meet me over there. All right. Yep. And here is a bear trap. An old one, hanging out. Measuring my cave so we can put it official. Just going through. Come to the light, Dave. <laughs> oh my gosh, it feels like I'm being born. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I would hope it wasn't that rough of a ride. Watch your head. <laughs> yeah. Chuck's over there. Follow the light. <laughs> I'm not following the light. Not this time, sweetie. Okay. Are you not coming in? No. All right. It's a little tight for me. I don't think for one minute getting to Moose Cave is an easy task. Did I pan down? I said it was difficult. That is steep and rocky. Check out this cool rock wall barrier. We are on the other side of that wall barrier that Barry's leaning up against. It's a fence. <laughs> Dave found sort of a bench. Tina's in front of the cave. Let's go see what the front of that looks like. Check that out. That is the Moose Mountain Cave, and we will be going in there momentarily. Cool overhang, too. What you got there, babe? My lunch. <laughs> you made me bologna, right? Yep. No, wait a minute. Now, this is a geocache. This must be the cave at Moose Mountain geocache. So we're going to do what we do, and then what? Get back, back to, the, to the video. video. From the cave, you can see these mountains, and in here is the cave. Let's go check it out. Sorry about the shaking. It's pretty cool. There's the hole, and in there, it looks like it goes further, but there's a big rock in the way. And that's what it looks like on the way out. Tina's exploring. <laughs> Slip on the ledge. There is a small room off to the right where Dave is headed now. Hey, you look like whack a mole again. Right. <laughs> now, let's move in for a closer look. Just to give you an idea, that's how tight. This hole is the Davison. So. And I'm scrunched up. Yeah, we're gonna let him out now. <laughs> He's getting cramped. This is where the adventure team is at so far, heading down. Barry, Tina, Dave, and Charles back to us. 
There you go. My turn. He's moving. What do you want me to do? Kick the bucket. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we are on the trail now, headed over to Mountain Pond or Lake, depending where you do your research. We are in search of Bear Hansen's cave. Tobias Hansen built his home out there, and he lived in that cave until his home was built. So we're gonna see if we can find it today. Welcome to Mountain Lake. This used to be a stream, then back in the early 1900s, a dam was built and it created the lake. And like Jones Pond, it's stocked with brook trout. Now along the lake back in the day was the Mountain Lake Camp, complete with tennis courts. The picture you're looking at is from around 1910, and if you come in from the Brookfield side, you'll see it at the kiosk. So let's go in the woods and see if we can find any remains. We're trying to find remains of the Mountain Lake Camp. Just a rusty pole right here. We are looking around to see if we can find anything else. There's a fridge next to the stove. They found a railing. Pretty cool. That's a little indescribable. Some kind of washer or something? Not really sure. So there was brick here. But if you look over here, Barry uncovered under the pine needles. The corner here is brick. So that could have been a fireplace or a chimney. Right now it's just a brandy perch. We found the foundations. This is one of two. So we are going to guess that this was more than likely the mountain lake camp. This is the second foundation that we've run across. There are bed frames down there. Oh, right there. Now this is interesting. Where Dave's coming out, you saw those rocks are just piled on top of each other. As we come over here though, you can see that cement was used on these rocks to make a foundation and perfect example is right there. Okay, everyone, I believe we're seeing what Tobias Hansen saw in the late 1700s when he walked from the Portsmouth Dover area seeking farmland to settle on and decided to spend the night in the cave up here. And after a good night's sleep, Tobias decided to stay in the area. He ended up buying 500 acres from the government to build his homestead. And he stayed in the cave until he had built his home. Now look, it may not look like much of a cave, but according to our team expert, Dave the Cave Guy, because of its historical significance, in New Hampshire, it is considered an official cave. A side note for those of you who watch New Hampshire Chronicle, have you ever heard of Fritz Weatherby? Supposedly, Tobias is his uncle. Well, that's pretty cool. And how about this cave? How come it's called Bear Hansen Cave? Well, there's two legends that explain that. The first one states that when Tobias got here, there was already a bear living up here, and he didn't want Tobias here, so they fought and the bear lost. The second legend says after Tobias had moved in, he heard noise one night. He went out to investigate, and it was a bear. They fought, and, well, the bear lost. But whichever legend is true, they both end the same way because it says that Tobias had roast bear that night for dinner. And his legend goes on and on as of fighting bears, and they always lose. <laughs> after his house was built, he proposed to Hannah Meter. They had 11 children. 11 children, wow. I guess they had to do something to stay warm on those cold nights here in New England, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so this is the engineers figuring out how Tobias built. It's 13, so if you're talking. 15, yeah. So yeah, two the feet roof. Yeah, especially if you went to like for this position. Yeah, because that's what I'm imagining they did. All right, so what we're imagining he did, we have no way of knowing. Tobias cut 15 foot birch saplings, put them between two rocks. So we're figuring this rock, in the top of this rock, because that would give him this whole area also to live in while well, he built this house 70 rods away. We're gonna try to go find that too. But what he also did with those coming across, then he took birch bark, put it on top of it, that would divert the water off. So he had this whole area here, and then could come in here, and I mean, it is what it is. He spent the winter of 1800 in here, a lot more hardier than I could ever be. Amen to that. <laughs> but I give you. Bear Hansen Cave. Now we gotta be honest here, without this picture from a book called Images from America, Wakefield and Brookfield, page 105, we would have never found this cave, seeing how it doesn't look like caves we're used to. We'll put a link in the description box down below if you'd like to purchase the book. Now we don't know for a fact if this is where Tobias built his house, but it's supposed to be 70 rods from the cave, which works out to be just a little over two tenths of a mile. I come in at one and a half tenths, so it could be, could not be, not really sure, but that there is definitely man-made. 
To end the day, our final stop was the cemetery of the Hansons. Tobias Bear Hansen, to be exact. Family Cemetery, 1796. Very, very cool. Thanks, Tobias, for the history. Yes, rest in peace. We have completed our hike. And if you're wondering what type of hike it was, just look at Miss Brandy. We all want to be laying down on the ground. Yes, we do. <laughs> According to my iPhone, we did about nine miles today. We went up, strenuous climb to the cave on Moose Mountain, came all the way back down, went to the other side out there by Mountain Lake. We found the old Mountain Lake camp, we believe. We found Tobias Hansen's cave, you know, Bear Hansen cave, and icing on the cake, we found the Hansen Cemetery and Tobias's final resting spot, and we do wish him to rest in peace. We're not gonna keep you any longer. If you like what you saw, appreciate that thumbs up as always. If you wanna see everything we do here on the We Are Mud Fun channel, Dave? Hit that subscribe button right down there, and if you wanna be notified of future videos, click the bell. Or you can just leave a comment. Barry, where would they do that? Right down below us. If you got nothing to say, no questions to ask, you can just say hi. Why, Tina? We'll say hi back. We always do. Because until our next video, the end. The end.